All right, let's see. Today we're going to start talking about the relational model. Um, where is it? There we go. The relational model, which is, let's see, I think that's the start, chapter two. Is that chapter two? Um, Is it still chapter one? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Still chapter one. That's fine. Um, but what, what I want to look at is how we got to the relational model from other things. Now, if you look at... Well, if you look at... Um, lists of things, right? You have a phone book or whatever. You have lists of things. You have, you have rows and columns, right? So let's do this one. Let's say we were looking at registering students for courses, okay? So I wanted to have Joe Smith, and maybe Joe has a student ID number of one, two, three, and then he signs up for... Uh, English 1000 and um, then we have two three four we have Mary Jones and she signs up for chemistry I don't know um, 10 10 the idea then Somebody else you might have Michelle, Michelle, um, Williams, and she signs up for English. Now suppose USF did this for all of its 40 some thousand students that are here. You have a table with all this information about students picking courses. Now, you want, there are some things like, let's look at, um, what if, 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 let's put another person in, Mike. Um, And Mike takes math um, one 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 one. Now, what if Joe takes chemistry? What do you do? One two three. Joe Smith. And he's going to sign up for Chem 1010. All right, so what about if Mary wants to sign up for math? Same thing. So I, two, three, four, Mary, Jones. And when I say she signed up for math, so far, so good. Okay, now, this is pretty simple stuff so far. I didn't even get into where this thing meets. I didn't get into who the professor is. I didn't get into any of that stuff. I just just starting with something real simple. Do you see any problems with storing your data this way? Could misspell her name. You misspell her name. Now let's let's say Mary is a senior. So I've got three and a half years of Mary's courses in this system. She's up to 105 credits. 
she's she's looking to graduate. You know, you know I got a lot of a lot of her information here. And then Mary and and Mike meet up, and they get married. And Mary changes her name to Kid. Now what do I got to do? Yeah, okay. Well, let's see. So I'll come in here, and I'm going to change her name to Kid here. Now what? You see any, any problems with this? All right, it's, uh, it's two people with the same student ID number. The computer thinks that they're two different people because the names don't match. So the problem here is is that, that we have an update problem. Updates cause a problem because when I change her name, I have to make sure I change it in all locations. All of them. And if I forget one, then it, the system is going to treat the one I forgot like it's a different person. You know, we have Mary Jones uh, still and Mary Kidd, and they think, well, these are the same people. But that, that, that doesn't show it that. Okay, so you have update problems. Now, um, what if... Um, Let me add one more. Uh, seven, eight, nine. Tom. Uh, right, I'm not feeling too, uh, Tom Robinson, right? I'm not feeling too creative right now. Tom Robinson shows up and he's going to take Psychology 1000. Oh, here's, here's a question for you. Where do I get a list of all the courses we teach? On that, you have to create another list. I mean, if, if we're not doing database cards, right? You have to clear a list and put all the questions, things. Five questions, three things, and then, of course, outfits. And the room, maybe the room number, and the professor. I'm just saying a list of all courses we teach. The co basically the equivalent of the course catalog, catalog, right? You want to know what courses are offered in business or in engineering or whatever. Where do I get that here? Yeah. Really? Well, I could kind of go through and sort sort everybody by course number, and I would have redundant course numbers in there, but I would be able to pick them out. So I, I would have a, I would, could get it that way, but suppose like my project management class is offered in the fall, it's not offered in the spring. Does that mean we deleted it from the system? But it looks that way because I'm not offering it. I don't have anybody signed up for it in the spring. So there becomes, there becomes a problem there. What if Tom decides he's going to drop psych. What happens to psych? If he's the only one there, then it goes away. So when you filter, it's not going to be there. So you have delete problems. Putting this all in one, one spreadsheet, like an Excel spreadsheet, you have, you have update problems, you have delete problems. You have, you, you now no longer, there's no record of you offering psychology to anybody because there's nobody signed up for it. And it doesn't even get into the whole thing whether you're actually offering it or not. There's no way to know what's being offered. Right. See how this works? So you have, you have different, different problems with different ways of handling data. Now, one of the things that we do have here that we want to keep, there are, there's some, here's some, um, some things that we want to keep, just improve on we have this idea of a student ID. We have the first name. 
excuse me, last name, uh, and then we have a course ID. Okay. Each one of these columns. So I, I wouldn't put somebody's first name in under the course ID column. I'm only going to have course numbers. And I wouldn't put uh, somebody's last name under the student ID column. Because that's just for that stuff. So I, I have a way of sort of categorizing different bits of data. So um, as I'm moving forward here, also the, the relationship between Joe's student ID, his first name, his last name, and the fact that he signed up for English, those bits of data are related to each other, aren't they? Yes. Right. So. This we want to maintain. So I want to keep the, the relationship between Joe's student ID and his first name and his last name for sure. And whatever courses he takes after that, we want to keep that relationship too. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to come up with, we want to break this stuff down into uh, different lists so that I can have a complete list of all the courses that I, that I want. I can also have a complete list of all the students I want. My, my list, does this tell me all the students that are at the university? What if a student's taking a semester off, but still is a student here? There's no record of that. There's a lot of stuff. Unless there's a relationship between a student and a course, we don't have a record of the course, I don't have a record of the student. You mean the database that house all the students in general? Right. So, what we want to do, is we want to create lists, which we're going to get into the terminology now. Lists are basically tables. We're going to call them tables. <clears throat> what we did in this previous example is we tried to create one table to, to do everything, and that doesn't work. So we're going to create separate tables. In each table, we're going to have um, Fields. Can you tell me where the fields are in this? Give me an example of a field. Student ID. Student ID. Student ID, first name, last name, course ID. Those are all fields. So the, the fields are columns. Okay? So the, the, the columns, oops, columns, <coughs> are fields. And then the last last thing we have is records. What's an example of a record here? The entire row. Re entire row, 123, Joe Smith, English 1000 is a record. So this one, the easy way to remember this is record row. Both start with R. Okay. Uh, let's, if that's for me, I'll call him back. Let's move, and let's take this concept and move it ahead. So, in our registration system, what lists do we need? Mm -hmm. The one we were trying to do over here. If you could divide this into discrete objects, what would, it, what would they be? You need the student information, right. course information. Right. All right, let's start with those two. So I would have um, a list of students. Then I would have a list of courses over here. That the students could pick from. Now this is an improvement because all right, in my students, I'm going to have uh, student ID, <clears throat> first name, last name, major, whatever. We get a lot of information there. Just think about when you applied to come here. All the things that they asked you, emergency contact, where you live, where your mailing address is, all that stuff is stored in a student table somewhere on this campus. So all of that gets put somewhere. Then the courses, you know, I got a course ID and maybe a, a title, um, 
number of credits. You get the idea, right? Would you put like, like uh, the amount for each course? The Cost? Yeah. Uh, probably somewhere else. This is just a list of every course we offer. Gotcha. And you know, the other description about, you know, English literature is a wonderful of Chaucer and Shakespeare and blah, 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 that big paragraph they put in there. You probably have that. <laughs> don't have that anymore. Don't bother. When you go to sign up for your class, you click on it. It says that uh, something, something, please contact the office. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I change her name. Notice her, she's in the system exactly once. Now, I know some, some places don't work this way. They should. So when you, if you changed your name or you changed where you live, you should go into the system one place, change that information, and then the next time you get something in the mail from the university, you should go to your new address. And it should have your new name or whatever. Your new information should be automatic. And it shouldn't matter if you get something from the residence hall, the library, the, the cafeteria, the, the registrar's office, the bursar's office. It doesn't, shouldn't matter. It should all have, it should all look for that one place and find that information. And if it's, if it's been changed, it should show the changed information. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So yeah, this solves the problem. Agree? And we would do the same thing for courses. We'd have the course ID, the title, and the number of credits. And we would have, so now we, we have a complete list of all the students. And then we would do the same thing with a complete list of all the courses. Right. Now let's look at, um, let's look at, let's look at, let's look at. We, what we're trying to do here is create a relationship between students and courses. Agreed? Yes. Now there are three kinds of relationships. There's a one to one relationship. This is easy. A one to one relationship is this. I have one student has one first name. One student will assume has one student ID. One student has one major. Yeah, 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 even though you can have a double major, but let's just keep it simple for now. One student has one GPA. Get the idea? Mm -hmm. So all of that, that, the information that has a one-to-one -one relationship, typically you put it in the same table. Okay? You put it in the same table. One-to-one -one relationship. <clears throat> then, there is a one to many. My infinity symbol is for many. One to many. Okay. How many courses are you taking this semester? Four. How many students are you? One. You are one student taking four courses. So the relationship between you and your courses is one to many. If it's two, or even the possibility of two, it's many. So you, as one student, have four courses, one to many. So there's a one to one, one to many relationship going that way. Now, how many students are in this course? Is it, it's either one, many, or zero. Well, you know it's not zero. You know it's at least one, so it's, it's, and it's many. There's more than one. So that gives us the third relationship here, many to many. And this is where it gets a little sticky. The relationship between students and courses is a many-to-many -many relationship. There are many students in this course. Each one of those students can take many courses themselves. So they have a many-to-many -many relationship. Trying to put that all, trying to create that relationship the way it is, is difficult. So what you have to do when you have a many-to-many -many relationship is you need to break it down into smaller relationships. So instead of having a single many-to-many -many relationship, you break it down into one or more, or actually two or more, one-to-many relationships. So how would we do that? How could we do that? What happens, what information could we use to bring these together into one-to-many relationship? Because now it's many, many students taking many courses. But I need to break that down into a one-to-many relationship. Give me a, one one-to-many relationship. How could I do that? Student ID related to the course study. So basically, we put student ID over by the course. So the course you have a student ID over so we'll put student ID in this table here? Yeah. All right, so, and, and if I do that, 
Oops. If I do that, how, how well, I didn't do a, um, I didn't do the courses table that way, but, um, oops. What about the other way? Put the course ID in the student table? Yeah, you could, because if you change the course ID at that point. All right, so if I, if, if I put the course ID over here, all right, so now if you're taking um, math, what do I do for Joe when he takes chemistry? Because you have more than one course ID, right? You have more than one course, right. Well, then he's going to take psychology. So, yeah, I know what you're saying. So you're going to have a multi-value field over here. Yes. And the other one's just single value. That violates the relational database model. I read something about that where it says there's something. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and if you sort that table another way, then you lose it. You lose the relationship. So the record needs to be the entire record needs to be repeated. The amount of times he has courses. So if he has four courses, he has that same record repeated four times, and just of course ID being different, right? Isn't that what we did here? Yeah. And what we already said we had problems with updating, and we had problems with deleting. So that doesn't, and, and it goes both ways. Because if I, if I put the student ID in the course, then I could only have one student per course. Because it's the same problem. Because I don't want to have repeats, right? What if I made another table? All right. Well, uh, let's let's look at an, another uh, before we get to that point. Um, what what is it about student ID? What's what is what's um, special about student ID? It basically relates the student to their entire file. Wow, I mean, does the student ID give you who they are basically? Okay, how many, t how many? And it's just only one student ID per person. One student ID per person. And how many people have the same student ID? No one, just one person. So it's unique to everyone, right? So what we, so this field is unique. Now, what about with our courses? How do we find each unique course? Let's say in my transcript I need chemistry 1000 or whatever it was. How, how, is there more than one chemistry 1000 that meets my criteria for my transcript? Yeah, section number maybe. But it doesn't matter what section I take, right? As long as I take chemistry 1000, right. it meets the re requirement, right? So I find the course I need by the course ID? Yes. Is that unique? To so that, yes, it is. Right, so there's, there's my, my transcript says you need chemistry 1000. I go out and take any section of Chemistry 1000, doesn't matter. Right. Professor Smith, Professor Still whoever. Still yeah. So that's also unique, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So my course ID is also unique. What we do, what, you know what we call these? These fields that are unique? Primary key. Primary key is the field that uniquely identifies a record in a table. Let's look at it. It's easier to, when you see it, it's easier to see. There's only one primary key per each table, right? Right. There's only, there is only one primary key per table. 
There can be a combination of fields sometimes. Two fields make up, excuse me, make up a primary key. So they identify the field. It's the field or combination of fields that uniquely identifies a record in a table. So the library, the, the library wants to know where those library books are that you have that are overdue. They look you up by your student ID number, and they use that to find out who, what your email address is so they can send you a message saying, hey, I'll help bring the books back. They find you by your student ID number. Because when you checked out the book, they have student ID number, your name, the book you checked out, right? And that goes into a, a database. When you know, they're looking at overdue books, the, the, the data is supposed to come back, they have overdue books, they sort them by date or whatever, and they say, oh, there's Marcus, he has to bring that book back. So they say, oh, and here's Marcus's email address. Send out a, him a notice saying that he needs to bring the book back. But they found you by your student ID number. Make sense? Now, you don't want anybody else having your student ID number. And I, and I guarantee you, as, as long as this university exists, no one, past or present, will ever have the same student ID number as you have right now. Yeah, probably will. Yeah, or they'll go to a different different way of doing it. But nobody will have your ID number because, you know, if somebody com else comes in here and they get put on academic probation or something like that, and they have your student ID number, it looks like you are on academic probation, and you don't want that, right? Or worse, they might say that, you know, it looks like you owe money because this guy didn't pay his tuition bill, and then you get the bill. How do they know the difference? So guaranteed, nobody will have the same. Your student ID number, except you. That's the good news. So, see how this goes? So, what we can do, oops, went the wrong way, is with this primary key information, since this is unique and this is unique, what if we made a, a third table, and we'll call this table schedule. All right, what fields would you put in here? Course ID. Okay. Title. Let's just, course ID. Yeah. Why course ID? Because that's going to allow me to go, once I click on it, then it takes me back to the course table, which tells me the title, so I don't really need the title. It takes me over there, tells me the title, how many credits it is, so on, so on, so on. Good. Good. It makes it all these are smaller links to a bigger picture. Right, that's what you want. Right, good. What else, what else should I put in from the student table? Student ID. Student ID. Now, like you were saying a minute ago, I have course ID linked back to the courses table. Right? So if I find a course ID in here that somebody signed up for, I know what the title is, the number of credits, and all that stuff. Same with the student ID field. I want to know, I see a student ID in this, this table. I don't know who it is. I don't know what their major is or any of that stuff. But I can find out by tracing it back using the relationship. Now, when it, when it goes, will this student ID and course ID repeat in here? No. No. Not unless somebody makes a Google and puts another course ID in on the original database for the same thing, which they shouldn't. Let's look at it this way. Here's my schedule table. I have my student ID, my course ID. Just, just let's go, go with that for now. So... I have Joe signs up for math. Then I have um, just assume three, I think this is Michelle, three, four, five. Michelle signs up for math. Two people in the same course. That makes sense. That happens. Yeah, I was thinking okay. Was thinking. Then Michelle Signs up for chemistry. 
or whatever number that happens to be. The, sh the student ID number does repeat when a student signs up for a, a second course. That's okay. And the course ID repeats when a second student signs up for a particular course because we can't afford to teach one person at a time. This is only, a, this is only in schedule. Only in schedule. I got you. I'm thinking a whole bigger picture about I'm thinking like outside what they're looking at, but this is actually the inside work still. This is the recreating the tables. Right. This is not outside to go in and get the information and create a report. Right. Okay. Now, if we make a, a rule that says that we assume that nobody repeats a course, you know, like now if if somebody makes does bad in a course, they can retake it for a passing grade. If we assume that that never happens in our system here, then we can say that the combination of student ID and course ID is unique, isn't it? Right. Did never be a course? Yes. That you'll never see Joe taking math 111 again because he's already taken it. So you see how that works? So if I go back, where am I? Here. The, the primary key for the student table is the combination of those two fields. The combination of student ID and course ID is unique. What else could you put in that schedule table? I can think of one other field that would be, that belongs in the schedule table that, so, because what we're talking about now is signing people up for courses, but throughout the life cycle of registration, what's the final step in registration? Well, the registrar's office does. You sign up, you start going to class, you take your test, you turn in your project, you turn in, you take your, fun, take your final exam, and then you get a grade, right? So, could I put a grade in here? If I go and look at the, what I got, let's look at, if I put a grade over here, then I could have, you know, Joe gets an A in math, Michelle gets a B plus in math, then Michelle gets an A in chemistry. See that? So the, the relationship of Michelle to chemistry is an A. The relationship between Michelle and math is a B plus. Get the idea? Yeah, so on the last one though, when we do the schedule, when we put in grades and schedules, yep. right there would have multiple entries, right? On, like, on the, right there. Where it says grade, we have multiple entries right there inside the database as well, right? Because every course ID is going to have, usually a grade next to it. So take it, it's in the schedule. So what I, I'm going to say is I'm going to have student ID 1, 2, 3, math 111, A. That's going to be one row. Okay, under the schedule table. And then, and if I want to know who's who is student ID one, two, three, I use my relationship right. to come back over here. Now I use one, two, three. How many how many students am I going to find with one, two, three? Maybe with nine or something like that. Like, what it is. How many students have your student ID number? Oh, I'm sorry, none. I'm on the one, one. One, because it's a primary key. It's unique. So if I type in one, two, three over here, I want to trace it back to the students table to find out what's this student's name and their major and where they live and email address, whatever. That I find exactly one record with that information in it, and all that information relates to that student ID. I was getting confused because I was looking at them as being um, um, as a row, um, each one being rows. Of course, ID is two ninety grade, but that actually be one entire row. Yep. Um, that. Yeah, these are just a list of the fields that go in there. Yes. Make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, let's see. I think. All right. Um, I think that's about as far as. Chapter one goes. I think chapter one they just put in two they put in two tables and do they relate them? Uh, I haven't gotten that far. Okay. Um, I'll be getting there probably when I go home. Yeah, they I'll probably just read the rest of it. It's like six pages I got left. Actually, yeah. Five pages right now.
Yeah. yeah. I think it's one or two tables is all I do in the first. So, yeah, so that's about as far as we want to go with this uh, for today. But next week we'll pick up. The next week we'll do is we'll go through access and I'll we'll review how to create tables and access and do um, relationships to them. And actually, I have a, a database that's all filled out with data. I can take a look at that one as well.